welcome you all to the 40th ICET annual lecture on Indian Seismic Codes on Bridges, Challenges and Issues for Development. Today, we have amongst us chief guest and speaker for today's lecture, Professor S.K. Thakkar, former professor of earthquake engineering and former railway bridge chair, Indian Institute of Technology, Lurki. So, Without any further ado, may I invite Professor S.K. Thakkar, Professor T.J. Sitharam, President ISET and Director IIT Gohati, Dr. Ravi Chakka, Secretary ISET to occupy their seats on the dais. May I now request our director, Professor T.J. Sitaram, to felicitate our chief guest with a bouquet and a kamusa. now like to invite the dignitaries on the dais to light the lamp and inaugurate today's program. Thank you, sir. May I invite <coughs> Professor T.G. Sitharam, President, ISET, and Director, sir, to deliver the welcome address. Good afternoon to all of you. Namaste. Welcome to IIT Guwahati. Professor S. K. Thakkar, today's speaker. Professor Ravi Jakka, Secretary, Honorary Secretary of the ISAIT, Indian Society for Upgrade Technology, and distinguished faculty colleagues, and also delegates from the city and from several universities uh, around IIT Guwahati, also our faculty, students, and business scholars. It gives me great pleasure to be in front of you today as uh, the president of Indian Society for Earthquake Technology. I welcome all, all of you to this 40th ISET annual lecture, which is going to be delivered by Professor Thakur. And Professor Sakkar Thakkar is supposed to go to America in the next month. So he made his time to come here with me, with us today and deliver his lecture. I especially welcome Professor Thakkar, former professor, Department of Earthquake Engineering, and also the former Railway Bridge Chair of the Indian Institute of Technology, Rurki. And he is a very distinguished academician and as well as a researcher in the area of earthquake engineering, who has really 
kind of very kindly agreed to deliver this 40th ISET annual lecture. So we thank you, sir, from, our, uh, from all of us. It also gives me a great pleasure to welcome all the Indian Society for Earthquake Technology Executive Committee members. At least there are five of them here. And fellows and members of the Indian Society for Earthquake Technology. We also came to know there are more than 40 members from uh, the Northeast in our list in the Indian Society for Earthquake. Some of them are not very active, but uh, they are the people who are the members of the ISAC in the list of ISAC membership. As you all know, the Indian Society for Earthquake Technology holds an annual lecture along with the annual general body meeting every year, which is delivered by an eminent engineer or scientist in the field of earthquake technologies. This lecture will be a, a printed in one of the forthcoming issues of the Journal of Earthquake Technology, which has been published by the Indian Society for Earthquake Technology. Previous one was delivered by none other than Professor Ross Bolonga, student of Professor Idris from uh, UC Davis, America, and I was happened to be present in Haiti uh, Hurki to hear his talk on the liquefaction related aspects, and, uh, which was very, very well received. And today I would like to take some few minutes to speak briefly about the objectives and major activities of the society, that is Indian Society for Earthquake Technology. Indian Society for Earthquake Technology was founded by late Professor Jay Krishna in 1962. So you can see the history you know, of uh, this great institution. Who was its founder president? And uh, he, and later, I said, honorary fellow, he became I said, honorary fellow also. Professor Jay Krishna was elected as the legend of earthquake engineering in the meeting of IAEEE, IAEEE, that is the International Association of Earthquake Engineering, during the 14th World Conference on Earthquake Engineering at Beijing in China. And later on, he went on to organize in 1977 the World Congress on Earthquake Engineering in India, in Delhi. I still saw, uh, again thanks to Ravi, to share the pictures of uh, Honorable Prime Minister that time, Srimati Indira Gandhi, actually meeting every delegate who attended the conference. Shook hands with every delegate who attended the conference. So that was a great moment for Indian Earthquake Society, because uh, uh, President the Prime Minister of a, such a large democratic country attending such an event and also sharing her experiences. So the objectives of this society are to promote research and development work in the field of earthquake technology, to provide necessary forum for scientists and engineers of related specialization to come together and exchange ideas on the important issues of earthquake technology, and also to disseminate knowledge in the field dealing with scientific and engineering aspects and also to honor pioneering and meritorious contributions of the scientists and researchers in this area of earthquake technology. It is also represents India, as I said, Indian Society for Earthquake Technology represents India on the International Association of Earthquake Engineering, IAEE, of which the society is a founder member. So president and vice president of ISET represent as national delegate and deputy national delegate respectively in the IAEE assembly. The executive committee of ISET also acts as the Indian National Committee on Earthquake Engineering and president ISET is also ex officio member of the relevant committees of the Bureau of Indian Standards responsible for formulating various courses of practice of earthquake engineering. Society publishes quarterly research journal namely ISET Journal of Earthquake Technology and also a newsletter. Society also brings out special volumes from time to time such as Advances in Indian Earthquake Engineering and Seismology, Contribution in Honor of Jai Krishna, which is actually a Springer publication, which has been published by Springer. So society has printed the 500 copies of this book, uh, of the book Guidelines for Earthquake Resistant Non-Engineered Construction, authored by Professor Arya, in order to give recognition to a good research paper published in the ISET journal and other publications of the society for honoring significant contribution in the field of earthquake technology globally and innovative <coughs> PhD work. Several awards are available under ISET, instituted by its fellows and members. Society organizes symposia, workshop and short-term courses 
related to earthquake technology from time to time. It has organized 16 four yearly symposia with Department of Earthquake Engineering at IIT Roji. About 28 symposia and workshops have been organized by the society so far, including the sixth World Conference on Earthquake Engineering in 1977 in Delhi. Another flagship program I set is organizing international conference on recent advances in geotechnical earthquake engineering and soil dynamics. It's called as Ikraji. This uh, five Ikrajis were held. Actually, the chairman of Ikraji is Professor none other than Professor Shamshay Prakash, who is a legend in soil dynamics and earthquake engineering and former director of CBRI. The five of these conferences were held in America in the University of Rolla. The sixth one was in Delhi. Seventh Ikraji, we will be organizing in Bangalore, in the University of Science, uh, I being the chairman of that conference, uh, between 13th to 16th July 2020. That means we are only left with uh, about four more months. So I welcome all of you to join in Bangalore in July for this great event. What is interesting about is we have received about 430 papers and more than 75 speakers are uh, both from international as well as national speakers have been identified, which is a very large number. So there is a daunting task for Ravi to coordinate the technical program in three days. Okay. It's a huge task with the four parallel sessions which can happen. Seventh Ikraji is a continuation of these previous six such international conferences which were organized under the chairmanship of Professor Shamsha Prakash, as I told you earlier. Society is also preparing to bid the bid, uh, bidding to host the 18th World Conference of Earthquake Engineering. All of you know that 17th World Congress will be in uh, Hokkaido in Japan okay, in the month of uh, September middle. And now we, we, India is interested to bid in 2024 the 18th World Congress. Again, uh, we took some initiative from IIT Guwahati and returned to the Honorable Prime Minister to support us. So we have got a sort of a positive signal the letter has been recommended and sent it to the Ministry of Earth Sciences. Ministry of Earth Sciences has actually called me, had a discussion. So now we have to formally bid to the society of IAEE and hopefully, because only one issue is, it's going to be in Asia again, if it has been offered to us. Okay, it is right now in Japan, so it will be. Generally, these international earthquake engineering conferences are, they change the continent every time. They hold, they, they're holding one year. It's going to be a big event if it is going to. Initially, we thought that we are planning to host it in Guwahati, particularly in IIT Guwahati. Uh, even still, I, my heart says that. But however, uh, the practical difficulties and as well as uh, uh, logistics pushes us to Greater Noida uh, for the convention center where so we all of us can just go as a visitor and attend the conference and give our speeches and come back because there will be an event management company which will take care of that. So we are still anyway discussing with the ministry as well as the government and hopefully we get that, that this way. The current membership of the Indian Society for Earthquake Technology, which includes honorary fellows, life fellows, members and institutional members, as well as student members, stands at 2000. The ISET activities are spread all over the country through ISET local chapters. Society has about 12 local centers at Roorkee, New Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore, Jorhat, you see, remember, Jorhat as a center, very uniquely, okay, it's the intellectual capital of Assam, okay, Nagpur, Pune, Amravati, and Gauhati also as a center, and Velo. Society has two student chapters, one at CBIT Hyderabad, and other at Velo. And I request, you know, many of you, uh, the people who are here, should also start the student chapters in their respective institutions. We are going to support that. All those engineers and scientists interested in earthquake technology who are not the member of the society, I invite them to join the society. So we will provide you the application or it is also available online. So you can download and become a member. The fees are not very high anyway. I am very happy today Professor Thakkar is going to give a talk to us on Indian seismic codes and bridges, challenges and issues for development. And this is uh, 40th in the series. And I'm very happy. And I would like to also thank Professor S.K. Dev for helping us locally to organize all these events at uh, 
IIT Guwahati. And all the students, volunteers who are here today to help us to organize also I would like to thank. So finally, ladies and gentlemen, I once again welcome all of you to this annual lecture. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. May I now invite Professor S.K. Dev to give a brief introduction of our annual speaker. Good afternoon to you all. At the outset, I would like to welcome all many participants from different organizations in the city of Guwahati and my colleagues, students. My association with Professor Tucker goes back to 1988. He happened to be my PhD supervisor under whom I completed my PhD in 1993. So I'm personally very happy to uh, see that he is here all the way from Rukki, you know, to deliver this, uh, I said, annual lecture. It is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker of 40th ICET annual lecture, Professor S.K. Tucker. Professor Tucker, born in October 17, 1941, holds degree of B.Sc. in Civil Engineering from Bikram University, Ujjain, M.E. in Structural Engineering from University of Rurki, PhD also uh, from uh, University of Rurki in the year 1970, he got his degree. Professor Tucker is Fellow of National Academy of Engineers. He is formerly Professor of Earthquake Engineering and Indian Railway Chair Professor for in Bridge Engineering at IIT Roorkee. Have a distinguished career for more than 50 years. He joined University of Roorkee in year 1966 as a faculty member and became full professor in the year 1978. He has held the position of Professor and Head in Department of Artwork Engineering, IIT Roorkee, Dean of Faculty Affairs at IIT Roorkee. He also served as President, Editor and Secretary of Indian Society of Artwork Technology. His field of specialization is in domain of Structural Dynamics and Earthquake Engineering. He has been involved in postgraduate teaching, PhD research, conducting continuing education programs, consultancy services in the field of earthquake engineering. He has been actively involved in large number of sponsored research projects funded by different national agencies. Many, I mean, important consultancy projects he involved uh, in the field of bridge design, including uh, many bridges in our northeastern region, Kaliagumra Bridge, I understand he was main consultant. He also handled many projects related to gravity dump, nuclear reactor uh, structure, multi-story building uh, projects, strengthening and retrofitting of structures, writing of seismic codes by BIS and IRC, Indian Road Congress. He is author of large number of research papers in journals, both international, national and international conferences and national conferences. He is currently a member of BIS Committee CED 39 IRC B2 of Indian uh, Road Congress. With these few words, I invite Professor Tucker to deliver 40th ICET annual lecture on Indian Seismic Design Codes on Bridges, Challenges and Issues for Development. Uh, director IIT Guwahati and former and president uh, Indian Society of Earthquake Technology, Professor Varigal, who is former director of IIT Guwahati and a old friend of mine, and uh, uh, Professor Dev, who has been my student and has been so affectionate with me, and distinguished uh, members of the executive committee of ICET, and my young friends and very senior colleagues sitting here. Now it's a great pleasure for me to uh, give this lecture and I am really much thankful to ICED Executive who invited me to deliver this uh, 48th lecture. Now I have been associated with this subject of 
Sanskrit course on business for a long time, so I thought that I would share some of my uh, views on this subject. Uh, now, the subject of Sanskrit course, as you know, is a continuing process. It is it is never ending situation, and it goes on, goes on, and uh, trying to correct the previous faults and trying to bring us the new technology and new ideas in the course. So this uh, subject has facilitated me and I uh, have been associated with uh, uh, two of the three courts more closely and all the three courts in fact uh, while they were forming. So I thought that I will give a uh, picture of the formation of these courts and what challenges and what issues are really involved in <coughs> in this uh, formation of the course. Now in this uh, presentation, I would like to talk uh, particularly the overview of Indian Sanskrit course on bridges and the damages of bridges and past earthquakes because much of the repetitions in the course are greatly influenced by the performance of bridges and past earthquakes. Many of the repetitions could not be given unless we have that, that kind of experience. There is a numerous experience learned from the past earthquakes and uh, in India as well as abroad, in fact more from abroad because uh, we, they had greater experience of uh, bridge damages than us. Not that we did not have the earthquakes, but we had earthquakes, but we did not have that kind of developments which has already occurred in United States and Japan and other countries where bridges have been more damaged and has given a lot of experience which have helped in updating the courts. We also had experience of bridge damages which I in India and I have particularly taken some examples of damages that occurred in India. Uh, but our experience is very limited because we had very few bridges in uh, zones, suspect zones which have been subjected to really bigger earthquakes. Then there are certain highlights which I will uh, try to figure out and uh, more details are available really in the course. So one has to refer the course. I may not be able to uh, tell you everything about the course uh, because that's not possible in such a short time. Then what are my critical views on the course and what are the challenges that are experienced and what are the issues for development uh, that uh, has still to be continued. Because we are, as I told you, we are never complete on the uh, code aspects. We always, something is left uh, when, when something is written out. Bridges are very unique structures and a uh, majority of research in earthquake engineering is actually uh, based upon the, with the building as a structure in mind. Because, because of buildings, majority of the research has been done and not so much on the, with the bridge as a structure in mind. And where, while bridge is also equally important and many more structures led to much greater <coughs> advancement in earthquake engineering, like in nuclear power plants. Now, bridges are very unique because uh, when they are very short, piers, they are dominated by single mode of vibration. When there are tall piers, they are dominated by multiple modes of vibration. Their behavior in onshore transfer direction is different and because uh, their structural systems are different. Usually in buildings you have frames in both directions, in prison you don't have. You have a different uh, kind of uh, load transfer in the both directions. It's usually a very long and narrow structure like a building which is a vertical structure. Each pier has an independent foundation which receives the ground motion uh, independently. There are bridges with a short to medium span, which we have in India. Majority of our bridges are fall in this category in India, short and mid to medium spans. We have very fewer longer span bridges in our country. While some other countries, advanced countries, have very uh, good experience of longer span bridges. And but we have started constructing longer span bridges in India also. Now the foundations in bridges are also very different than buildings. We can have open foundations when they uh, when the river bed is in rock, there is a strata, we can have open foundation. We can have deep foundation. Majority of bridges in India are having deep foundation. River bridges are having deep foundation, particularly well foundation is a very preferred foundation in India, although pile foundations are also 
but well foundations are our preferred foundation in India. Now we have three different courts in India, uh, one which is particularly referred to the bridges, IS 1893 part 3, which has come out of part 1 actually. Uh, there was a single court of 1893 uh, in around 1962 or the later 70s, where there was a small section on bridges. Now in 2000, in 1993, at the time of the Latour earthquake, the, it was thought that the uh, various structures should have a separate core. And this particular core bridge literally was uh, conceived as part three. There were several other cores like stack-like structure, dams, and uh, some other structures, instrumentation, they were thought of. And several sections were came out from the um, a single 1893 code and part 3 was one of the codes that came out of the original 1893 uh, code uh, which was the structures in the run and there was a small section of bridges in that and that was blown, blown up to a full code and it was published in 2014 although it was really much earlier but we has taken a really long time in the uh, uh, printing process. RDSO uh, specific guidelines for railway business. This was uh, framed by IIT Kanpur, especially um, with the collaboration of RDSO, and this was published in 2015. And this also had a unique uh, features uh, for railway business. Now, IS, SP, IRC SP 114/2018 specific guidelines of road business for road business. This is recently published in 2018, although. This has been going for a very long time. There was section uh, 222 in IRC 6, uh, which was exclusively devoted to uh, bridges. And this was also based basically on the IS 1893 uh, original code uh, section on bridges. And we have basic conditions were uh, drawn from there. But 18, uh, 2018 is now separate guidelines. It's exclusively built for road bridges. Now, to give the brief background of these bridges, uh, this course, 1893 part 3, is, covers various types of bridges, all types of bridges. Uh, road bridges, railway bridges, pedestrian bridges, over bridges, all types of aqueducts, and all kinds of bridges. While RDSO specific guidelines covers railway bridges in particular, because railway demanded that we should have separate bridges. And as the IRC SP 114 2018, these are the guidelines for exclusively for road bridges. The parent specific code actually 1893 part 1 2016 which is recently revised in 2016 had general provisions for buildings where general guidelines have been made about the uh, principles of architecture design and general uh, provisions which are applicable to all kinds of structure not for buildings but basically written for buildings but they are applicable to all <coughs> kinds of structures. The basic zoning is given in this particular code. The Code had been uh, earlier there were five zones, but uh, after 2093, Latu earthquake, uh, one and two zones were merged into zones. Second zone, and we have four zones: two, three, four, five, and one and two are merged into second zone. And then zoning identifies the different level of specificity in the country, and, and then response spectrum, which is uh, common. And which has been adopted. So zoning and small spectrum is adopted by <coughs> all the three courts. Now this is a specific zoning which uh, consists of two, three, four, five. And as you know that uh, there have been some changes in India uh, of these zones, particularly changes occurred after 1967. Uh, the Kona earthquake, the first earthquake which created a lot of hassle in the country on earthquake. Uh, phenomena, particularly where Kona got dam got damaged, the only a concrete dam was all got down in 67, and that generated a lot of earthquake in the activity in 67. Then there were a number of earthquakes, and particularly in 2000, 1993, when Natur earthquake occurred, uh, some zoning was revised, and the one and two zone were zone to zone two, three, four, and five. And uh, there were various zone factors that were assigned to these zones from point 0.1 for zone 2 and point three six for zone uh, 5, that is, that represents the maximum 
considered earthquake or credible earthquake uh, acceleration. So point one is that for zone two, which is blue color, and uh, uh, point three six for red color, which is northeastern Asia, we are sitting in the northeastern region of the country. So point three six is the maximum acceleration that was. Uh, all these coefficients were actually basically uh, came out of judgment. Uh, not very much. Of course, of course, such tectonics has been considered, but majority of these uh, figures, uh, Professor Jagishna, Professor Chandrasekhar, Professor Arya, they were the people who were. Uh, and earlier, the coefficient were 0.01 to 0.08, but subsequently, 1993, uh, zone 2 was assigned as 0.1, 10 percent of gravity. But we are not designing for these jets. We are designing for jet by 2, basically. So by dividing by a factor of 2, and the design basis are great. Now, this is a code response factor. This uh, actually is a period <coughs> versus spectral acceleration. This has been adopted by all the codes, uh, all the BRIS codes, and all other codes also they have accepted this uh, figure. And uh, this one at zero period uh, value, one, this is to multiply by Z, Z factor, which is 0 0.1 to 0 0.36. Uh, but we are designing for Z by 2. That is the situation. Right? And these spectra are given for three types of uh, rock, uh, ground level, uh, formation boundary levels. The type 1 that is rock, type 2 that is medium soil, type 3 that is uh, soft soil. Now, port process, as I told you, is a continuous process. Uh, there have been problems uh, with the uh, knowledge and design practice. There are always gaps between the state of art and existing design practice. The state of art is, you know, is much advanced. We have moved to the performance based design, but we are still following a force based design in our courts. And so there is always a gap between the uh, design uh, practice and the state of art practice which is available in the literature. Now this is because of the, uh, uh, there are difficulties in implementing the new ideas and new procedures and new methods in the courts. And uh, research and development, uh, design development have caused faster movements than the courts have been revised so frequently in our country. Now, design philosophy um, uh, is sometimes reviewed, and this is also to be updated from uh, sometimes, uh, although philosophy is, doesn't change that frequently uh, uh, because we have been using two categories of earthquake design earthquakes and one uh, <coughs> maximum earthquakes, uh, which have a different performance uh, under design criteria. Now, there have been deficiencies in design methods noticed, which I'll figure out later. And that is the reason why we have to update our uh, present uh, design methods into a, a more uh, available uh, better design methods, which have a better ways of achieving the performance of uh, criteria <coughs> performance design uh, criteria. Now, oh, there have been experience gained from the recent earthquakes. This has also been responsible for update of ports because there are experiences which are available from only from the observations from the performance of earthquakes. And that has caused uh, some uh, modifications and updates in the course. Now, there have been feedback from professionals because of their experience in design and design practice. So, this has also caused the update of course. Now, earthquake facts are many, as you know. But majority of the quotes are written for inertia effects. And of course, as far as business concerned, earth pressures have been included. Hydrodynamic pressures have been included. Soil effects have been included to some extent. Tsunamis, fire flooding, and landslides are so, not so far covered in the structural design practice. And their effects have not so far been included in the course. So as far as business are concerned, we have taken care of the inertia effect primarily. Uh, that is ground shaking, earth pressures, and hydraulic pressures, and soil effects. Now, suspect behavior of bridges, as you know, is different than behavior of buildings. And because the majority of earthquake engineering has developed around the building as a structure in mind, never the bridges or any other structure in mind. So, the you know, bridges are structures of post earthquake importance, they have different categories of importance. because. Uh, bridges, directly damage of bridges may not lead to immediate loss of life, 
because people may not be on the bridge at a time of earthquake or maybe uh, uh, but our bridges are required to be surviving after the earthquake because they are required for uh, post earthquake rescue and relief operations. So if immediate rescue and relief operations are not available, uh, there can be secondary losses and loss of life. Uh, now, bridges, bridge behavior is much different than structures like buildings. Now, natural road registering system is different in both road and transport direction I mentioned before. Bearings are vulnerable to damage in bridges in particular. <coughs> now, buildings are, have been designed on the basis of a strong column of weak beam. While bridges, it is reverse. We have a strong girder and uh, a strong, strong girders and weak columns. So, plastic bridges are tending to form in columns rather than in beams in, in the case of buildings. Now, plastic hinges are formed in columns in bridges unlike in beams and they are in fact uh, in the other design method they are forced to form and in columns and energy dissipation has to take place through columns only. It cannot take place through beams or gutters. Now, redundancy in the traditional bridges like uh, cantilever uh, bridge piers because substructure is the most important in, 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 in traditional bridges. Uh, hardly anything happens to superstructures. Superstructures are very rigid and massive, and not much damage has been experienced in superstructure. Uh, uh, but uh, the redundancy in the traditional bridges, like in the cantilever piers, is very low. And uh, because of the low redundancy, the possibility of collapse in, in uh, bridges is much more than possibility of coefficient collapse in buildings because redundancy in buildings is much higher. Soil effects are more significant than in buildings and sensitive problems on bridges are now very well understood. Uh, although solutions may not have been found for all sorts of problems. Now, in the later quotes like uh, RDSO quotes and uh, SP 114, uh, greater emphasis has been given to the uh, conceptual design because we should take the best advantage of what is the experience of the past and should not uh, commit the mistakes, same mistakes again and again. And so what is the implications of seismic action? This we should understand in the conceptual design process at the level of conceptual uh, design. So it can affect site selection like soil instability because it's very important in foundations for business, seismicity and hydraulics. These are three very important uh, areas which can decide on site selection. Now, choice of bridge type, this is again reflected uh, and uh, at the conceptual design level, you can decide which structural form is the better one if you have a choice. Normally, you don't have a choice in uh, bridge structural forms. Mm -hmm. But if you have a choice, then you can certainly decide the structural form, which structural form can perform better, and what should be the lateral load resistance system, what should be the shape of piers, and what are the innovations possible in your design. And foundation bearings and expansion joints are two foundations, bearings and expansion joints are very critical for bridges. A lot of damages occur in bearings. So not so much damages occur in foundations usually, but bearings and expansion joints are very vulnerable. Now, you, then you have to see it because at conceptual design level whether you are going to follow a traditional design like a, a strength and ductility design or you are going to follow uh, structural control techniques like passive isolation or passive energy passive, uh, devices. What is the performance desired uh, that you should have the idea of at the level of conceptual design? And what are the sensitive methods available? Linear and nonlinear both <coughs> methods are available. They have a different roles. What linear methods can give you or what nonlinear methods can give you? This is to be understood very clearly for a designer. And what are the design methods? Uh, two methods of design are available. Uh, for force based design and performance based design, force based design is based upon the force is the basic parameter, while displacement based design or performance based design is based upon the displacement as a uh, basic parameter. But so far in our country, we are following force based design. We have yet to move on, the, uh, on to performance based design. Now, main seismic problems in bridges are uh, out of phase motion between peers. Now, peers, though, maybe not very wide apart, say 120 meters is a very common span in, in a bridge. They can also have a out of phase motion. Now, not because the distance is very large and wave travel time is more, uh, is uh, more, 
But because the bridges are so constructed, their soil properties, they can greatly influence the ground motions uh, coming over onto the pier. And because of to, it is not uh, difficult to assume that two piers, adjoining piers in the case of bridge, may have a different soil properties. And the ground motions reaching on the top of the pier could be quite different. Uh, and their dynamic characteristics of two adjoining piers not so far distant may be quite different. And as a result, there can be out of phase motion. So out of phase motion can even appear, can occur even in, in short span bridges, or to say of long span bridges, last one different ground motion supports and long span bridges can occur when the spans are uh, uh, pretty apart, like in cable state bridges or suspension bridges and other types of bridges. The failure of bearings and expansion joints is very well known that these can these are very vulnerable areas in the case of uh, bridges. You know, people have started thinking of integral bridges without bearings. Uh, many bridges have been constructed without bearings, particularly to avoid bearings because the damage occurs in bearings. Uh, damage occurs in expansion joints. So number of expansion joints are reduced in number. Their spacing is increased <coughs> and uh, bearings are uh, so far, there is no perfect solution for bearings. You cannot say that this type of bearing is better or that type of bearing is better. All kinds of bearings have been subjected to earthquakes and they have been damaged. Even elastomeric bearings, uh, rocker roller bearings, all kinds of bearings have suffered. There is no perfect bearing so far one can say has been arrived at. Now, inadequate seating weights, seat weight, seating weights. This has been one of the problems which has been found. Uh, this is uh, this has caused the falling of the spans. Uh, this is very dangerous type of failure. You should you cannot expect and nobody can accept falling of the spans of a bridge in an earthquake, which has happened actually because of various reasons: out of phase motion or even because of some liquefaction problem have caused of uh, falling on spans. So now, non ductile behavior of some structures is one uh, <coughs> problem which occurs because of the lack of ductile uh, ductility in the substructures. Failure of foundation due to soil affection has been seen in many bridges, uh, particularly uh, not so much in India, but in abroad in Japan, this has been seen in many bridges. Uh, there are examples available of failure of Shoma Bridge in Nagata earthquakes, that is before, uh, where the damage of occurred due to soil production, and there are many more. A failure of earthquakes and approaches can occur, and this can cause serious problems to the bridge, and different ground motions in also the ground span bridges can of course occur. Now, earthquake design, resistant design of bridges, what does it mean? Okay. Earthquake resistant design of bridges really basically implies providing structure with adequate strength, structure and ductility to withstand earthquake forces. Now, this is all who looks very good in theory and words, but it's very difficult to actually uh, implement in practice. But this is what is required. <coughs> it should have adequate strength so that it can resist the effect of the earthquake. It should have adequate stiffness because the displacement should remain controlled, because in bridges sometimes displacements are very critical. It is going to become large and uh, superstructure span can be dislodged or bearings can be dislocated or can be damaged. And uh, ductility is of course very important because it gives the energy dissipation and uh, effectively reduce the extent of forces on the structure. And uh, <coughs> the structure can survive uh, primarily many times because of ductility provisions. Uh, selection of appropriate structural configuration is uh, and providing detailing of structural members and connection to achieve ductile behavior. Structural analysis and structural design are two very important design processes. This sometimes have to be very carefully used and uh, in the analysis and design. And these are to be updated from time to time if required in the code formation process. Now, emphasis on earlier design method was on the prevention of collapse, not so much on control of damage, but now with the uh, coming up to performance based design, we are more focusing on the control of damage because we don't want a lot of damage to occur after earthquakes and requiring tremendous amount of repairs after the earthquakes. So we should have some control right at the design level by controlling uh, certain parameters so that uh, damage, or, uh, damage is minimized. Now, there are two significant uh, developments in design which I would like to point out, which have been, both have been considered in India. In, they are available in not only Indian courts, in all world courts, these concepts have been used. One is the elastic behavior, elastic behavior and ductility in seismic design. This has been a very effective way of controlling the 
designs in the uh, earthquake resistant design features. Uh, last time we have reached to energy dissipation, that will be also cause uh, uh, energy dissipation and uh, effectively breaks <coughs> down the forces, force level of the structures. Now, capacity design concept is extremely useful and uh, uh, as much effective in buildings as in bridges also. You can visualize the failure mechanism and you can design the plastic hinges uh, at the control locations where you should pre decide the location of plastic hinges from the plastic mechanism that you can conceive. And you can achieve tile behavior, you can avoid protein load failure, you can prevent collapse. So, primarily, the function of the capacity design is to prevent the collapse uh, of structure. And these concepts have been very well now uh, brought in the SP 114 to 2018, uh, brought by the railway business. And also, it is listed in the, it is mentioned in the uh, uh, other quotes, other base quotes. Now, I gave some very few examples. I will just pass through these slides. Uh, bridge failures, behavior of bridge in earthquakes in <coughs> India. As I mentioned, uh, we have little experience, but we have some experience, useful experience. Now, this is one bridge which was damaged in 2000, uh, in 1991 in Uttarkashi earthquake. This bridge was single span, 53 meters. This over toppled. Now, here you can see the accelerations were not that large. PGA at Bhatwari. Uh, Actually, the bridge was site was located 14 kilometers from Batwari, and uh, the accelerations 0 0.253, 0 0.246, 0 0.294, they do not seem to be very large to cause the bridge to be damaged. But this bridge appeared to be very close to the epicenter or very close to the place where the accelerations were very large. And this caused the jumping of the bridge, actually, uh, superstructure and uh, twisted and fell. So there was a complete uh, Collapse. Some, uh, some such failures have occurred in the past in India also. Uh, now, this uh, Bhuj earthquake 2001, which is often referred, uh, very actually the buildings were damaged more than bridges in Bhuj earthquake. Uh, the damage to the bearings approaches occurred at pounding of superstructure. The Suratbari bridge, uh, which was very, not very far away from the epicenter, this was damaged and uh, uh, this caused a period disruption of the bridge. And, uh, this was probably uh, damage due to metallic in the metallic bearings and transfer displacement of superstructure. Now this was damage uh, railway bridge near Bachao. It was very close to epicenter, four meter high RC pairs, minor damage only. Uh, this was a multi span RC beam road bridge on low height piers so near Bachao, bridge under construction, cracking of piers, separation from bearing block. And uh, uh, this uh, was the Rutu Mata bridge. You know, the framing normally not used so much in bridges, but it is very effective because framing leads to proper transfer of forces. So damage did occur in this bridge also, there was cracking and all that, but uh, the bridge was intact. Uh, nothing fell down. In the bridge, there was cracking on the road and settlement on Crows Road. This is a Nehru Setu in Andabad, which was 300 kilometers away from the uh, epicentral region and suffered also little damage. Uh, now, this is a summary of damage of bridges in India. Now, we have a history of damages in India. Bihar, Nepal, earthquake 1934. There was a partial to complete collapse of some uh, bridges and the settlement of peers guide by damage and 10,000 lives lost. You have Koina earthquake. There was a Basundri earth bridge which collapsed. There was damage to the Koina Dam Spillway Bridge, 1967 earthquake, which uh, led to damage. And Broad earthquake, 1970. This is very close to the Broad Railway Station, and this particular place I had also visited after immediately after the earthquake, and this uh, had uh, holding down board shared the fixed bearings, mm -hmm. fixed bearings the board <coughs> shared off. Uh, this uh, Uttarkashi earthquake, uh, that bridge I mentioned, in Tilari earthquake, uh, uh, that is Latur earthquake, uh, 93. The damage was to the bridges was. Minimum, most damage occurred to the buildings. <coughs> Very failure of movement of piers and RC equipment. Uh, these Jawalpur earthquake, there was damage in railway <coughs> or railway bridges. No damage to any highway bridge, Chamoli bridge. In Kutch earthquake, damage to rocker roller bearings, elastomeric bearing bearings, restrainers, pounding action, cracking of piers, damage to expansion joints, approach zone, no loss of spine type of failure. No major damage occurred in 
was uh, earthquake. Uh, to the bridges. Now, lesson learned from the past. Do not repeat the mistakes committed in the past. Now, what are the mistakes committed? Mistakes usually are committed in not providing adequate ductility provisions in some structures where they are required. And Japanese have learned a lot in this connection. They had very tall piers and uh, their uh, reinforcement used to be uh, the cut off at uh, locations which were not desired. And they had to update the quotes uh, after 1989 and something. And they updated the quotes uh, where the reinforcement detailing was improved uh, on the basis of the experience of uh, 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 past earthquakes. So superstructure shifting and uh, disclosing of spans, this is uh, very often occurred in India also, number of time, but this problem can be handled much easily by providing adequate uh, measures uh, in the form of clamps or some holding down devices which can prevent the jumping of the girders. This can be handled from the number of different repairing failures have occurred. Uh, some structure lack of uh, fracture strength, ductility, <coughs> shear strength, uh, Insufficient transfer reinforcement, ductile detailing, and this has been the cause of failure of substructures. The upper paint, there have been a lot of failures, tilting, rotating, sliding forward, collapse, upper paint slumping. Uh, spill through upper paints are the only upper paints which have behaved better. There is embedded upper paints, as they are called in the earthquakes. <coughs> now, soil effects, there have been uh, uh, effects of soil in the form of soil amplification, liquefaction of soil, unequal surface loss of spine type of failures. Uh, this has not happened in India so much, but there are you know, empty number of examples outside the country, particularly in Japan, where these kinds of failures have occurred. In the adequacy of foundation, uh, bridge approaches, if the settlement of soil occurs and there is separation of artificial from apartment, uh, very dangerous type of failures can occur. Now, some highlights of part 3, 2014, uh, as I mentioned that this uh, bridges, this code is applicable to all types of bridges and also for checking, can be used for checking for retrofitting. But there are many updates required now, uh, even after six years we are finding that this has already become deficient and immediate some updates are required. Uh, so it is applicable to highway bridge, railway bridge, flyover, pedestrian, submersible, aqueducts, earthquake facts or apartments. Now this first time in this code, earthquake facts or apartments of frictional soils and cohesive soils have been included. Now, so far we have been considering only frictional soils, phi soils, but this in this C phi soils have been covered to include the earth pressure effects. Now, so far we are checking the design only DBE in India. We are not doing anything with the MCE. Now, people may ask that what to do, do we do for MCE? We are not doing anything so far in MCE. Not to, even in buildings also, I think not much is done. In business, nothing is done for the MC. Now, there are various seismic methods of analysis available, seismic coefficient, response spectrum, time history, pushover analysis. Each method has a capacity to provide you a different level of information. Now, this has to be very clearly understood by the entire. Uh, I would have explained in more detail, but because of lack of time, I'm not doing so. But the, they are all useful methods to give you certain kind of behavior in bridges and on buildings. But you have to understand what pushover analysis can give you, what time history analysis can give you, what response spectrum method can give you, what seismic ocean method. The response spectrum method is the most acceptable method currently used for buildings as well as bridges. Now, checking design is done by uh, four page design method, which has serious issues and problems. Uh, but so far, we are following world over. This is the method which is followed for bridges and building both. Bridges may undergo minor damage. This is the design philosophy. Under MC, considerable damage occurred, but collapse is not required. But this part is not checked. Nobody checks this for MC. Capital design concept is a very useful concept. As is, some people have started applying this, this can be helpful in locating the, in the forcing the plastic injury to occur at predetermined locations and can help you in preventing the collapse of the structure. This is a short method of preventing the collapse of the structure. Now, two levels of, uh, this is a design philosophy generally accepted. Accepted design philosophy. How much it is followed, I am not sure. Uh, it has two levels of okay, DBE and MC. Under DBE, minor structural damage. structure will remain functional after minor repairs. 
and the MCE considered to be local for structural collapses avoided. This is what is required. Now, ideas of guidelines. Now, greater emphasis have been given in these later quotes on the on the conceptual design because you should take a lot of advantage of past experience, which has not been done so far in terms of simplicity, in terms of planning, and in terms of selection of configuration, selection of selection of site. Uh, so you have to look, uh, take care of simplicity, symmetry, regularity. These are the basic rules in earthquake engineering. And, uh, uh, you have to design for uh, uh, design for a DBE. Uh, there are no design force. Uh, there is a lot of uh, issues involved with the what is the seismic force on the live load. Seismic force on the live load uh, is considered in a different way for railway bridges and a different way for uh, uh, highway bridges. In non-shoulder direction, there is no seismic force on live load. Transfer direction, 50% of design load is considered. So these are some things given. The R factors for different types of structures, uh, uh, connection bearings are given. Uh, Sexual design based on LPD, or based design, uh, emphasis on rectile provision through rectile detail. Seismic design through seismic isolation, base isolation is included in the RDSO guidelines. Now, this uh, again uh, has uh, features which includes this conceptual design in a much better way than any other code. And principle of strong data and weak column is used, and shear failure should be avoided in bridges. Then there's one concept which has been brought in this particular code in particular, that is design basis that we to design for bridges whose life is up to 100 years. For bridges whose life is more than 100 years, like uh, special bridges, or cable state bridges, or special bridges, or bridges uh, which are special, uh, fall in special category, uh, they should be checked also for MCE. This is this particular code I have mentioned. Now, uh, use IPD for design using R factors, use capacity design concepts. Uh, this I think I have covered. Such design methods, hydrodynamic pressures. Okay. Now, comparative features, different codes are having a different applicability and there are different range of applications and scope of application. Therefore, need for different codes is justified. A different codes is justified. People often ask why different codes? Or why not only one code? One code is not sufficient because different codes may have it. different range of applications, different scope, and different sometimes design criteria, performance criteria can be different. And, uh, but same design force is there in all the codes. The important factors could be different. R factors should be saved for similar type of structural systems, but sometimes it so happens that R factors you will find different in um, 1893 part three, different for same system, different in uh, RDOs or different in, this has happened because different committees make the codes and sometimes the efforts are made to bring down at a closer and to remove the gap, but this has not happened so that easily. Now, we have to look at certain controlling factors uh, which we need to search, like uh, ground shaking uh, is the aspect which is most covered in the quotes. In structural quotes, most uh, covered aspect is the ground shaking. Uh, Lights, lights, and tsunami are not covered. Liquefaction is started being covered now in uh, recent quotes. Near field effects, which are totally different than we are so far designing our structure for far field earthquakes. We are not designing any structures for near field so far. Then near field effects have to be covered in some form uh, in India as they have started, the courts have not uh, looked at this aspect so much. Now response spectrum, zero period acceleration, peak ground effect acceleration, these are some controlling parameters. Effective. Now these factors, as I told you, 0.10 to 0 0.36 were signed by learned pupils. Now they need to be reviewed. Now this time, 40, 50 years have passed, they need to be reviewed in the near future or later future, whatever. But they have to be see, based upon more authentic data which has been available since then and more experience which has been gained in, the, in these years. Now, DBE and MC, these are two levels of space, all of the structures are designed. But recently, in 2016 code, 2016 update, they have removed name of MC and DBE both. They have only one earthquake, which is designed earthquake. 
and this is also something which has to be seen in totality rather than in isolation. Now, for spatial structures, particularly structures bridges fall in that category, we have to sometimes have a site-specific spectrum. We have to consider localness effects, <coughs> like the soil effects or uh, seismicity effects or local fault and uh, local earthquakes, and we have to generate the site-specific spectra, uh, which are which can be based upon deterministic seismic hazard analysis or probabilistic seismic hazard analysis. These are the techniques available for the generation of the site specific spectra. And instead of the code spectra, you can use the site specific spectra, which is better balanced as compared to code spectra. And the historic data, earthquake data, has to be taken. Time histories are uh, important uh, for uh, control uh, as a controlling factor. A design for the philosophies are often to be reviewed from time to time and uh, in formulation of the new codes so that we have a better updated design philosophies uh, than for the old methods. Now, there are a number of uh, seismic uh, analysis methods, seismic coefficient, spawn factor. Everybody wants to use seismic coefficient because they want to have a simpler life. But seismic coefficient gives a very limited information. It's good for static type of analysis, where static analysis is inadequate. That is the only uh, method available. But that will not be sufficient. You may have to dynamic methods like response factor with R, method, R factors or time history analysis. In fact, I always prefer time history analysis rather non linear time history analysis. And this is the direction in which we should move in future. And pushover analysis, of course, gives a certain information which is not available through any other methods of analysis, particularly the uh, location of plastic injuries or mechanism that you can determine from the push -over analysis. Now, seismic design methods, uh, force plate design, force plate design, including capacity design, these are the currently used, or displacement plate design, which has the potential of controlling the damages. That is why we are pressing against force plate design. Now, there are deficiencies of force plate design, uh, which have been pointed out empty number of times and by number of peoples. And <coughs> that is why we have to uh, improve our design methods. Uh, uh, because the R factors are inadequate. They are not proper indicators of damage, uh, inadequate to control damage. R includes uh, effects of ductility, redundancy, overstrength, <coughs> and choice of R often involves judgment. Nothing more than judgment. And many times R factors have been uh, given in the quotes based upon some experimental evidence, but many times on the uh, purely of judgment. Structure designed by FPD are subjected to significant damage requiring tremendous this is one of the most deficient, uh, effective advantage of disadvantage of this method. That the structures which are designed by force, uh, uh, design, uh, those structures can be subjected to tremendous amount of damage and requiring tremendous force of repairs. A uh, lot of damage in the infill walls and other places is still happening because of the uh, force by design only. For potential PVD. That performance will be designed and potential to limit the extent of damage. Now, the R factors do not quantify the level of damage. The another disadvantage of constant factor of R is that in the multi mode analysis, this underestimates the contribution of higher modes. Because primarily, this R factor reduces response in the first mode. Not so, it is not so much proved that it can affect, uh, uh, it can lose the effects in the higher modes. This has not been proved. And people once use constant R factors, they are reducing the response in all other modes. So this is one of the great disadvantages of using this R factor approach. R is a period dependent, which is used in some codes. They have, because for long period, short period, there are different values of R, uh, 1 over u or 1 over root 2 mu minus 1. But uh, they are not so much used. Uh, some codes have, of course, using it. R is dependent on static behavior. Majority of R factors are based upon elastic plastic behavior, but your behavior could be different than elastic plastic. It could be something different. <coughs> Therefore, R is not a very R is not a very reliable way of uh, computing the earthquake response, which we are using for design. Uh, now, critical views of the quotes: uh, the uh, need for each course is justified, as I have mentioned. Uh, all quotes are based on basic R, part one quote. Any update in the code, basic code doesn't automatically get transferred into all other codes. Because any update which has been, say, IS 1893 part 4 is the basic fundamental code. Any update somebody does in the BIS, now those all 
uh, updates are to be correspondingly carried out in various courts, court making bodies, which is not happening automatically. And this has to happen because otherwise the uh, uh, courts become inconsistent. Uh, now, assessment design is uh, done for DBE and nobody is doing anything for MCE. Uh, R factors are used, uh, the ability, these are limitations. Whole page design with displacement check is what is required. If you want to control the damage in the structures, you have to follow force page design with additional checks on the displacement so the displacement remains controlled and the damage can be minimized. Now, there is a need for upgrade of such a design method such as PBD, which has a potential of uh, so far PBD we have not accepted in our country, but it has to come someday. It has to find a place to control the damage. And non linear time history method, I consider it a very rational and uh, pros and currently use uh, methods of self analysis. It does not require any use of R. R is not required at all. Therefore, the non linear time history method is going to be a method of future. It is not accepted, but I am sure that somebody will accept it in at least 10 years, 15 years' time. You know, because nothing is done by hand these days, everything is done by computer. So, what is the difficulty in doing, carrying out nonlinear time history? This I do not understand. So, nonlinear time history can be done. There are some issues involved in the selection of histories and all that, but nonlinear time history is, I think, the method of future. Now, MC can be, uh, business can be designed for MC using nonlinear time history. So far, nonlinear time history is not used at all. Issues of specific assessment of existing business. This has not been addressed so far. Sensitive base isolation has been included in some boards, and they have alternate methods of sensitive protection. And they can be used for certain situations. Structural health monitoring, which is designed for a very special category of bridges, uh, they have been used for in other countries for very advanced uh, type of structures, uh, very long span structures, and uh, they are very effective in and they can be helpful in uh, updating the codal procedures and codal methods. And in fact, the methods of analysis can be updated. Now, sensory design for near grid ground motion, this has not been addressed. So, issues for developments, upgrade of sensory design methods for multiple hazards, like uh, for performance by design, something which is required uh, in the near future, in near 5 10 years. Uh, people have to accept this. Uh, Devise conceptual difference between different codes. Uh, there should not be any conceptual difference between the different codes or practice which are written. Uh, there should be some method of coordination. Upgrade of sensitive methods of analysis, only the time history method and pushover analysis have a lot of potential in, uh, in <coughs> upgrading the analysis procedures uh, and they can be applied for MC at type of earthquake. Uh, specific, now, there are two issues which are not addressed so far. One is the how to assess the existing bridges which are likely to be damaged earthquake which have been not designed adequately for earthquakes. This has not been assessed. There, are, there should be specific assessment of existing and earthquake damage bridges should be included in the codes. This is not done so far. Now, sensitive retrofitting, soil effects to be rationally considered, the environmental effects, structural health monitoring, these are some issues for developments. Which now, the challenges are that you have to minimize the gap between state of art and design practice and course. Conduct research. You have to, there's a lot of research required, required to bring the latest available knowledge in specific codes. You knowledge is available, but how to bring it in codes, that itself will require a lot of uh, studies, examples. You have to see what is the application of uh, using a new technology or new design methods. Uh, research in this to be a lot of research in this. And includes uh, issues like uh, field effects, retrofitting, structural control, passive, active, and structural health monitoring. These are the issues, uh, these are the challenges that are to be included in the course. Now, uh, these are some modern methods of specific analysis. Uh, these are some design methods, uh, four page design method, performance based design, capacity design, capacity spectrum method have been used in uh, uh, assessment of structures which has to come up with the codes also in some form. Then structural response control techniques, uh, many of them can be very useful in controlling the earthquake damages. Now, finally, in conclusions, I would say that update analysis methods is the need of the time, non linear time history method we have to gradually move. And advantage is that uncertainties of R factors will be overcome.
uncertainty. If you follow non steel type C, R factors uncertainty will go. And update of design methods like performance based design, benefit is better behavior, less damage, minimize post earthquake repairs. A force phase displacement, the displacement check is the minimum that should be done. And future of earthquake resistant design lies in the nonlinear time history, the method of analysis and performance based design. Ultimate goal should be that there should be no damage in earthquakes out of post region recent and proven technology. We have to revise the post earthquake repairs in earthquakes. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Professor Thakkar. It was a very educative lecture. And I learned a lot, and you have thrown up in a lot of areas where the students and researchers could work. I have a particular uh, question for you because of your experience. You mentioned in one place about uh, integrated you know, construction, the pier and the without bearings. Without bearings. Yeah. The bearings. Yeah, yeah, integral bearings. Yes, they are, they are very common in the uh, United States. Yes. Yeah, no, there is one bridge uh, I was associated yes. with in. Uh, Second bridge in Varanasi it was a well foundation, then the pier and the uh, superstructure yes. all together in integrated. Yes. There was no bearing, nothing. Yeah, no bearing. Yeah, because uh, 138 meter spans, there were six spans like that, you know, and uh, hinges were there in between, uh, connecting the horizontal and okay. vertical hinges. Now, how are there performances in earthquake uh, situations uh, compared to the other? Performance, uh, I do not have the experience of uh, judging their performance in earthquakes that only time will tell. But uh, my experience is, um, feeling is that they will perform definitely better because uh, uh, the, the, there are no hinge parts or moving parts. So nothing can go wrong in that. The only thing is the structure should be have sufficient strength and ductility so that damage doesn't occur at other places. The advantage of the, these uh, bearings, etc., is that some, some uh, energy is released there. Uh, so that uh, advantage you do not get, uh, but uh, their performance should be better definitely. The expansion joints similarly, there is a uh, practice to reduce the number of expansion, uh, expansion joints because expansion <coughs> joints has created havoc in earthquakes. Uh, the expansion joints are too many uh, placed at very shorter intervals. They can create a lot of problems. Even in Kaliyabhara bridge, the expansion joints uh, uh, got damaged. Uh, even uh, it was. Uh, they, they, uh, they had given, uh, referred this problem to us and we studied in great detail. It was a, actually a foundation issue. It was not a problem of earthquake. They uh, told us that this has happened because of the, in 1988, two earthquakes have occurred. One is August 6 and August, others, I think August 18 or something. Uh, one was in Burma, border region, very close to this region. Other was in Bihar, Nepal. Both the earthquakes had affected this uh, bridge and they told us that this, any time the earthquake comes, bridge tilts. Pier, tilt, pier did not tilt because of earthquake. Pier tilted because of some issue with the foundation. And expansion joints were badly damaged. Uh, one, the closer, interestingly, the closer of one expansion joint was equal to the uh, opening of the other expansion joint. So it was clearly that pier had tilted. And uh, tilting occurred because of some foundation problem, which, is, uh, which cannot be corrected afterwards. We cannot be brought back to the original position. This was a new device code. Uh, this R is different for uh, longitudinal response calculation and. R is different. Yes, R has to be different. So and uh, some people have, uh, some codes have given the uh, choice of choosing different R in different regions of the structure. So my question is, I mean, instead of I mean, particularly for river bridge, instead of single pier, if we go for a band. Then, uh, in that case, I mean, there will be more. Plus, we can, I mean, propose same R probably for both transverse direction. Yeah, I understand in flyover and all, it is very difficult to go for a band. But at least in river bridge, uh, can we not, I mean, uh, suggest some. Uh, this See, thing? R, 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 different for what for types of PR, PR different in the direction. that. If we go for bent, then it will be more or less similar to. Oh, bent is more or less similar. 
so that that is why particularly yeah, main. Frame is a better understood structure. So, but in case of which is what happens is that people have a tendency still to constrain one type of peers. One type of peers are not so, uh, very good from a particular point of view. Because in one direction, they will try in other direction, the one is very long and uh, it uh, causes a lot of very high transfer of forces. forces and this yeah. is no ductility, personal no ductility available in other so that is what I am thinking. I mean, uh, there can be some uh, this thing. See, the R can be different. You can be different. What I am telling, R let it be same because it is very difficult uh, because we are checking a lot of design. You know, most of them they ignore that uh, R value See, one in uh, <coughs> transverse direction. The with R is that people have started using R for reducing the forces. So R comes into denominator, and more R better it is. You know that R can be more. Uh, <coughs> But R can be more only when it is ductile. When it is ductile, R can be more. And R cannot be, uh, in my opinion, R is very R values of R are very dangerous to use. Uh, so the maximum values of R used for even frames are not more than 4 to 5. Uh, well, while we know that in some situations R can be 8, 10. But uh, you cannot use very large values of R. I'm telling actually both direction, whatever we are providing, say 2.5 in longitudinal direction. Uh, uh, and that let us provide that also in uh, uh, transverse direction so and transfer. that we impose an additional so, this thing, provided design. we go for frame, 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 frame. Yeah. Yes. that is what I am telling. Frame, I have no objection. But if it is a wall, then there is a problem. Wall, uh, that code also does not allow very uh, large values of R in uh, transfer direction. Thank you so much. Okay. I want to ask you something. Uh, thank you, sir. It's very educational. Like even though I'm not <coughs> from Pakistan background, um, I could able to understand many things like the difference between the normal structure and the grid structure. Yes. I just have a couple of one or two uh, Like uh, you mentioned uh, in your presentation that there are. Uh, Philosophy. The philosophy of the code is to design for more earthquake and get for the maximum possible earthquake to ensure its safety. Now in 2016 code, as you said, it is abandoned. Like there is no mention of DDE and MCE. And being a member of the code, like can you tell us the people will look at it uh, this has been done. I am aware, but it has not been done because because any change is done, the current code is not automatically done in one course because all code bodies are independent. So it is still not done in uh, railway code, it is not done in uh, uh, highways code, it is only done in the parent code of BIS. Uh, they have done it. So I think these issues are coming up, people know about this. So they will, they will come up. They will, they will, I think, take it care of. Because in the normal design, you have to have more than one earthquake to check. You have to have more than one earthquake to check. comment on its <laughs> acceptability, good or bad point, but as far as code is concerned, it is FCE so far upon it. Thank you, sir. We now request
request the director sir to present a memento to Professor S. K. Dukasi. by the presence of Professor S.K. Tucker as chief guest and 40th ISEC annual speaker. We are thankful to Professor Tucker for kindly accepting our invitation and readily agree agreeing to deliver the lecture here in Gaubhati, quite far away from his place of residence. We are fully appreciating, sir, for sparing your valuable time and sharing your rich research experience with all of us. Thank you very much, sir. I personally thank, thankful to HEC Civil Engineering Department and other authorities of IIT Gauhati for extending all the support and facilities required for organizing this event. Also, my sincere thanks to Professor T.G. Sitaram, President ISEC and Director IIT Gauhati for his constant <coughs> guidance and support in various effects of ISEC during the year. Even in organizing today's event, he guided us in every stage uh, in spite of his busy schedule. Thank you, sir. I extend thanks to all the members of Executive Committee for their valuable suggestions and support. Special thanks to Professor S.K. Dev for his continuous support in organizing this event. It would not have been possible without his support to organize this event here. Thank you, sir. I am very thankful to ISEC staff for working hard for organizing this uh, event. Last but not least, I extend thanks to all the students, ladies and gentlemen, for attending this annual lecture, which in fact shows your interest in earthquake engineering. I request you all to become members of ISET to actively take part in various other activities of the society. I am quite sure that your active participation in the society activities not only support the society but also surely benefit you and reward you professionally. Thanks to all the electronic and print media for wide coverage of ISET activities from time to time. Thank you. To all of you. I now request everyone to join us for high tea. All the ISEC members are requested to come back for the annual general body meeting after the high tea. After 30 minutes. After the high tea.